Hey, I am Katie O'Brien and I'm a web designer and digital strategist. And today I am sitting down with Erin Olilla, who is a copywriter and content strategist. And she is my favorite copywriter, the one who I refer most all of my clients to. Um, so there's a lot of questions that come from my clients before they work with her, or really a lot of people before they work with a copywriter or knowing if they should or shouldn't. So sitting down with her and asking those questions so we can get down to all of the answers. So Erin, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so right off the bat, so I know there's a couple of different ways that you work with people. And I just want to know like the down and dirty of how does someone know if they should hire a copywriter or they should DIY? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I think the key to knowing whether you're ready to hire a copywriter or not is how well you know your own business. And that doesn't necessarily mean what stage of business you're at. I think that there are people that can um, come from like a traditional corporate job or a different type of employment and know what they're offering very clearly, know their pricing structure, know their ideal client, and they are ready to just jump right in, hire someone and, and perfect their like initial launch, right? Um, but there are also people who are, have been in business for themselves for a while, who might be in a transitional period and their offerings are changing. And for them, if they're not clear on what it is they want to say or who they want to speak with, um, sometimes I say it might be better to DIY at that, that period, or at least do a little bit more um, clarity seeking on what the offer is or maybe how the um, ideal audience has changed in this time of transition, because those key things need to be um, figured out when they're working with a copywriter. Um, I tell a lot of my clients, or at least we joke about the fact that as good as I am and as good as they are at clarifying their message and sharing it with me, I'm not a mind reader. And I'm also not, um, I, I can't make these business decisions for them, right? So, you know, as a very quick example, on services pages, for example, um, whether again, you're new to business, you're transitioning, or you're just there to get your message out to the world because you have been selling, but you haven't really had a digital storefront. Um, I need my clients to be able to tell me how they work with their clients, what type of packages they might offer or services. And if they're not ready to do it at that time, it might be a great jumping point for them to sit down, write the copy, um, really try to get their message out on their own before they're investing and spending the money to work with someone who can take those ideas that they have and really um, shape them so their message is really clear and motivating for a customer. Um, so I think the, the key really is, you know, how confident they are in their own message and their own offerings. Okay, awesome. And I love having that clarity too, because you know, you can guide them and I know you have a process to kind of get some of that clarity from them. Um, but you know, you can't, you know, start their business or like draft up their business from scratch. Like they've got to have like the business and the ideas in there and then you can help craft that. So, um, one question kind of before we, this is like a sub question that I didn't Hey, okay, I love sub questions. They're my favorite. <laughs> Um, so a lot of times my clients, um, one of the most common things I hear is I'm a really good writer or I love writing. So I think I'm going to do it myself. Um, most of those clients then transition into hiring you or hiring a copywriter. Um, can you speak to a little bit about like the difference of like being a good writer versus writing copy for your website? Yes, this is such a good question. I'm so glad you mentioned this because I feel like that's something I hear a lot too, whether it's your clients I'm working with or other people who've come to me and they've said like, I've been trying to write my website for three months and I am like so unconfident now. Like, I don't think I can ever write anything again. And it turns out, you know, when they give me a draft or have me look at something that they've written, they, they are good writers. Like they're able to clearly identify their message and they talk about themselves well and their business. But the key problem is that they don't have a marketing background. And I think that is another huge reason why it is good to hire a copywriter. Um, if you aren't sure if you're, you should be in that DIY stage, not because of business level, but because of skill, right? Um, I always tell my clients there, are, I have two types of clients. There are the ones who are, are able to write really well and get their message out, yet they don't have that, um, the marketing background, right? They don't know what type of copy 
what type of writing will make a sale and push someone towards a sale, or at least even if it's not selling something, push them towards a, a different step in the nurture process. Um, or there is a type of client that I work with who is able to completely vocalize these things and well, but they need someone who can listen to what they're saying mm -hmm. and synthesize that in the copy for them. Um, so I, I do hear a lot of people who want to write their own copy. And I think that sometimes that comes from a place of, I don't know if fear is the right word, but I think it comes from a place of like anxiety maybe to jump into a business. You know, I, sometimes I hear that from the people who have a lot of skills, like um, for example, maybe they worked, you know, in a, a large organization, you know, coaching a bunch of people and they've done this for like 15 years, let's say. And now that they've decided they want to start their own business their, or their own agency, let's say, and they say, okay, I can do this. Like, I know my job. I know everything that there is to do about the type of business that I have. So I'm the perfect person to write this. But I think that's the anxiety part is that they're not willing to step back and realize that their strengths are one thing and to get the most clear message it's really important to have someone be able to um, take what you give them like the message that you want to give your audience and then really shape that in a way that the audience needs to hear the message so sometimes i do think that there is a little bit the reason people want to diy their own copy i'm calling people out now i'm sorry i am an honest honest copywriter <laughs> you don't come to me for fluff um, but i think people do that because of an anxiety because they are nervous about the whole process and they just think you know Finances are a huge part of that too, right? Especially at the start of a business, you have, you want to be lean and you want to spend smartly. So you think, well, you know, I graduated high school. I have degrees. I can, of course, write things. Like, why wouldn't I write my own copy? But then you sit down and do it and you think to yourself like, oh, there's really a lot. There's a lot of psychology that goes into this. There's a lot of selling that goes into this. And, and I, I'll be honest, writing is tough. Like I have a degree, I have two degrees in writing. I have done this for work forever and I will be the first person to tell anyone writing is really hard. You know, it, it, it's not that easy to just make people like motivated to work with you or inspire, like show them why you're the right person. So I think, I don't, I don't know, did I answer that question? Yeah, no, okay. I, I feel like it's super helpful. And I also think, you know, you touched on something really important is when people are, um, you know, considering hiring a copywriter or DIYing, they, it's more than like just writing the words, it's the strategy behind it and the translation, it's the bigger picture, you know, it's attracting the ideal client, it's, you know, leading them to take action. And I think what you do such a great job of is, you know, I actually just have one of our mutual clients, I was on a call with her the other day, and she's like, well, I'm not gonna write this, I'm just gonna put it in bullets and I'm gonna send it to Erin. And, and it's like, okay, because she was like, you know, I, she clearly, you know, verbally told me what she wanted on the page in regards to copy and kind of what, how we're restructuring something. But then, so when I asked about the copy, it was more of a, you know, well, no, 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 I don't know how to write it for the website. Right. And really what she was saying is, you know, how to translate that into effective website copy to get her message across, but also oh. to get them to take action. Um, yeah. Can I actually touch on that for a second? Yeah. Because I think this is sometimes people, something that people don't talk about, or even myself, I don't think of to, to really explain sometimes. The strategy is sometimes more important than the words, right? Um, I just worked with a client who's actually a, a DIY type of client. So she's written all of her own content for her website and because of the stage of business she's in and I'm editing it and like editing it in the help of like, in the sense of like helping to like add content here, move things around, not just copy editing. Um, but when it comes to her writing, she's great. Like she very clearly gets out a message and I think she doesn't even a really good job of um, talking to that ideal client, right? But the thing that she wasn't really considering is how her website works, right? So like, just not to dive deep into the mechanics, but like every page needs to have a job and you as the writer of your website need to be like the tour guide. So you have to make people take action on your site. You can't just say like, hope they click that about page so they learn more about me or like, 
you know, I did write all of this blog content and it's there, fingers crossed someone reads it, right? You have to direct them to do these things. It's your job um, or the tour's just not gonna go very well. You know, if you would imagine getting on a tour bus with no tour guide, you're just gonna keep driving, right? I mean, like any house on the street is gonna look either fancy or like the same because nobody's telling you what's important about these places. Right. So strategy is probably one of the most important parts of any web copy build because you have to make very key decisions and then that in turn originally affects what's written and then later when you have a full draft of your copy you have to kind of rethink the whole thing again to be like is this working will this work with design will this work with um cl uh, customer experience like there's so much more that goes into it in a in the beginning and the end when it comes to strategy Right. And I love, and I am on the exact same page. So as a web designer, so, you know, well, I've kind of talked, this is going to lead into our next question, but like logistically, you know, when Aaron and I work together or when Aaron and I work with the same clients, um, they finish working together and then they send me over the copy, but like the same thing, it's like, okay, they're working on strategy. Like what's the strategy of this copy and the words on here, but that's the same thing, like with the actual web site design too so like it can look pretty <laughs> just as I'm sure it can sound good right. but the strategy is that most important thing because we want to make sure that not only is it supporting the strategy of the copy but that same strategy that you guys have developed is then being carried through on the design and throughout the entire website so it really is kind of just that flow um, so I kind of touched on a little bit like copy comes first then the design um, but can you tell me a little bit I know it's probably gonna vary a little bit but just tell me a little bit about or share about what the process of working with an actual copywriter would look like. So logistics, yeah. you know, timeline, you know, editing, all of that. Totally. Um, so I will be the first person before I answer this to say that all copywriters have different processes and what I do would be very foreign to another copywriter, just as maybe what they do would sound like very silly to me, right? So we all have different ways that work. But I, I do think there's a general standard, especially when you're looking at an average website build. Um, obviously, the first thing is getting to interview your copywriter. And that sounds silly, but we don't all have the same skills and we don't all have the same um, processes. And those are important to know, like, one, you have to like the person you're working with. Um, two, they, they should have certain types of experiences or interests that align with yours and, and you're gonna wanna check their writing and stuff. So pick the person and interview a lot of people. Um, sometimes I'll meet with, a, for example, if you've ever referred someone to me, I'll say to them like, you know, do your research. Like, yes, I'm really glad that Katie sent you my way. I'd love to work with you because I love working with Katie, but, I want to make sure that I'm the right person for you, you know, like budgets need to be considered um, timelines, you know, some people have very specific timelines that their copy needs to fit into, or maybe they have more flexibility. So find the person. And then once you find the person, I, I can share a little bit more about what the process of copyright writing looks like. Um, for my clients, once we've decided to work together and all of the um, background stuff is done, like signing contracts. We'll schedule what I call a kickoff call. Um, and this is a, a little bit of a lengthy phone call. Usually I, I'm an over talker. So I will chat with my clients and get to know them, not just ask website copy questions. Um, but I'd say they last average of about 90 minutes. And in that call, you had said something earlier that I think is really important. When I tell you that um, business owners should hire out their copy if they know things about their business, that doesn't mean that they need to know clearly what to say, right? And they might have a ton of questions about their business. Like, you know, um, I worked with someone recently who didn't have her packages for like her, her offerings chosen. Mm -hmm. um, the key differentiator is she knew her business like clearly. She knew what she wanted to offer, how she wanted to offer, but she needed help with her messaging to make it, uh, figure out how to uh, offer it, if that makes any sense, you know? It wasn't that she needed me to help her make a business plan for her, it's that she needed me to sit down and say like, here's everything I want to do with the clients and here's the timeline, I, like the process and the timeline I'd like to work with my clients. Can you help me figure out a way to say this? Um, so that, that kind of stuff happens on the kickoff call. Um, I ask a lot of questions that I think my clients think are silly. Like, 
I have a feeling that when people decide that they want to get a website, they think that our conversation is going to have me be like, tell me about your resume. Like, let's talk about your bio. And like, that is the last thing I will generally talk to anyone about. Um, it's so far from what a website's for. And it makes sense though, because for the most part, the type of clients that I work with, and this isn't definitely not true for all, um, but I have a large group of small businesses or maybe solopreneurs. So they are their personal brand. Mm -hmm. And I think that when you, like myself, I am a personal brand because I, my business name is my name. Um, and I think that when you have a website and you're running as your own business, you think that it should be about you when it's, it's absolutely not about you. Um, your website is a, what I call a digital storefront. It's as if you are walking down a street and you see a fancy designed storefront and you know with puppies in the window and you're like puppies I want to go inside and meet those puppies, even if you have no plans for adopting right if you're attracted to the beautiful puppies a website's kind of the same thing I mean. It would all be awesome if we could have puppies on our websites. I know not all brands would make perfect sense to have that. Um, but just the idea of you want to entice people to come inside of your website and you want them to stay there and click around. So when anyone finds you, whether it's from a referral or whether it is from a, a Google search, which is the best kind, um, you want them to stay there because you're offering something to them. They have no interest. Like nobody cares about Erin or Lilla if they randomly stumble on my page. If they come to my page and they need help with copy or content strategy, they care, right? Then they care what I'm saying because they want to know how I can help them. Right. Um, so on our kickoff call, we do talk about those kind of things like the client experience, the client pain points, and not just the like generic, like what are they struggling with, but like how can you get them the type of transformation that maybe your competitors can't? You know, like what makes you, dif what differentiates you? What do you really believe in? Um, so from that point, the kickoff call, which I could probably talk about forever, we, um, we then go into what I call the easy job for my clients. They sit back and relax and I do all of my research. Um, and I had a client ask me recently why I go from like a time with them to like a time where I'm not writing, I'm not talking to them, I'm looking at other people's websites. Um, but the key part is I want to study their, the general brand that they want to have um, based on who their competitors are. And largely, most people will tell me competitors that are a step advanced from them, which is a smart like aim to do. You, want, you don't want to match your exact competitors. You want to be able to grow. So you build your website for growth. Mm -hmm. um, so I do research. Then I hop in and I do the entire full draft of the website copy. Some, this is where I might differentiate from some writers. A lot of times I hear some of my fellow copywriters will say like, oh, I'll just do like the homepage mm -hmm. so I can give them a feel and make sure the voice is right and things like that. Um, voice is never really something I struggle with, I think because we talk I, so much on that kickoff call. Mm -hmm. But for me, I think I want to get the message out clearly. And that's why I want to make sure the entire website is strategically working together. I personally think if you start with a homepage, it could get disjointed, right? Because then your client might see it and like it being the first draft, if it's not perfect in a sense, they might want to change the messaging and change this and that, which would affect all of the future pages. Um, so once I hand off my uh, copy of the full draft to them, it's, I always tell my clients like, I will, you're, you will not hurt my feelings. I am not um, married to this web copy. It is my absolute most important like thing to me to make sure that what I offer you is what you need and like what will sell it for your business. So if you like go into my copy and you're like, ah, ubiquitous, not that I would ever use the word ubiquitous. I have no clue why that came to mind, but ubiquitous, Erin, this world is horrible. Please never use the word ubiquitous in my copy again. I'd be like, cool. I will never for the rest of my life use this in your web copy. Like store that to memory, let's change it and put something new in there. Um, and then that's it really. From that point forward, we're just touching on light drafts. Like I will jump in and, and revise it. Um, a lot of my clients only need one draft on their website because we do the heavy lifting and then the research in the early phase. But you know, sometimes it does take a few drafts to just kind of work through things. Mm -hmm. And then the fun part is the handoff. 
Like at that point, the client can look at the website and conceptualize it for themselves. Um, and then I'm able to deliver the copy to you. And for me, I just see the word just then come alive, you know, because what I'm delivering is a document with words in it. And then when you're done, it's like this beautiful thing, like on the internet that exists and it's alive, you know, you're my surrogate. Like, <laughs> That's, that's what, how copywriters and website designers work together. The <laughs> website designers are the surrogates for the baby. <laughs> they grow them. They make them come alive. I've never heard that analogy. But it's I, don't, I never thought I'd come up with that analogy right now, but it really makes a lot of sense, you know? Yeah, it does. So you touched on a little bit like when the kickoff call, like on like how the questions are not like, so where did you go to school? You know, what did you major in? You know, like, what have you been doing? So you said like, you kind of have like those off the wall questions. And I'm assuming that's to like get to their like core voice and like asking the other stuff. So that's how like, you can really nail that from the beginning. So I feel like um, a really common question that clients ask are, you know, how is it, if it, someone else is going to be writing my copy, how are they going to sound like me? Like, I don't want it. I want it to sound like me. Like, how can they capture the voice of who they are when they aren't that person? So can you touch on that? Yes, absolutely. And I get that question all the time. In one sense, I feel like sometimes I get grilled on that question. Uh, and that's okay, though, because that's that part of, like, interviewing your potential copywriter that I think is so important. Um, I, there are some copywriters that might do things better than me and I might do things better than them, but voice, in my opinion, is the key thing to look for when you're differentiating, differentiating, differentiating copywriters. I can write, but I can't always speak. Um, just joking. So I, I think voice is important and I think that there is, there are a few easy ways to tell whether or not people can get voice. Um, the easiest is looking at their samples. And, you know, samples are really tough in the copywriting world. I feel fortunate because of different experiences that I have. I do a lot of content writing as well for big brands. Um, so, for example, I was on a call with a, a potential client yesterday, and she had said to me, like, I, I have worked really hard to build my brand. I am not a newbie. I have a very well-defined voice, and I'm, this is my first time hiring, so I'm, I'm terrified that I have this perfectly shaped voice, and now I hand it to you, and you're just going to go, like, haywire with it. And I get it, right? Um, so for me, the easiest way is to show the differentiation is, you know, I talked to her about the fact that for uh, two of my clients that are bigger brands and I do content for, for example, um, one of which is Oracle's Smart CX. And they're a tech company and they talk about the customer experience through sales, through marketing, all those facets, right? So your audience for those type of clients might be like C-suite level thinkers, um, professionals, people in the tech field, people in the marketing field. Another client that I work with is Hill's Science Diet. It's a dog pet food company. You know, and as an example, I think something I had written a few months ago for them was like, why does my dog bark at other dogs across a fence? Right, so they're different types. I mean, even just using that as an example, you can tell that like what I'm writing is very different. Um, so I, what I would do is I would just send some samples to clients. Um, so I would send them a dog sample, even if like, you know, the person I spoke with yesterday was a coach. So of course, I'm not going to write about dog food or dogs for her, but it gives her a chance to see here's the like professional tone and here's like a fun, playful tone. Um, copywriting and websites can be very difficult to share a uh, voice because what happens, I wouldn't say all the time, but what happens as people grow is they change their web copy. So I might have written something for someone and, you know, maybe they took out like a copywriting course themselves and they decide, oh, I'm going to change a few things here and there. Mm -hmm. Well, that changes the um, efficiency of what I've written, you know. I hope it would make it better, but it's still not a, a, like a, um, an actual showcase of my work. So a lot of the times I will um, maybe make screenshots, save PDFs of, of websites to send to people the original work so they could see. But I, I would just put that out there because when you are in the interview phase, if you're looking for a copywriter, um, and let's say you know they wrote for like a potential person, if, if that person's a referral, maybe say like, have you touched the copy since it's been delivered? You know, have you made any changes? Um, always ask for original things like that. I think that's helpful. Great. Those are all great suggestions. Thanks. So let's say 
they're adamant. They're like, I'm going to DIY this thing. And like, which is fine. I've, I've definitely been on both ends of that. And I've worked with clients on both ends. Um, do you have any recommendations for those who do decide to DIY? Yes. Um, but, you know. Okay. So I am going to have two completely different recommendations. Okay. Today. My first recommendation is, like, if you are adamant about DIYing, I still recommend you potentially interview copywriters. Not because, I know, right? It's a little, it seems a little strange. That's a good one, though. I think yeah, because, like, the, so the, this, I'm going to, you know, I think today's, like, lesson for everyone has been that I have crazy analogies, and I, I'm just going to own that. So um, when, when people get married, for example, they go to vendors to, like, interview them, like florist and things like that. So, but a lot of the times, like I can say this because I previously worked in the floral industry, people have ideas of what they want for bouquets, for example, or table centerpieces, but they are by far not a floral expert. So they might say like, I love peonies, but like cannot identify any other flower. Mm -hmm. So they come in and they'll talk to the florist and they'll get an idea. They'll look at pictures. The florist will actually name the flowers and things like that. Um, and it helps them then truly conceptualize the end product. And different florists will have different help, different ideas for them. Mm -hmm. So I think if you are completely dead set on DIY, just having the ear of a copywriter can do two things for you. One, it can help you get a little bit clearer on your actual message or things you, you might want to consider that you weren't thinking of. Um, two, it will help you decide if you are adamant or not. I mean, a lot of people I've talked to, or even people who have like hired me and said, okay, like I, one of the things I do as well is copy coaching. So I work with people who do DIY and then kind of finesse their copy, like I mentioned for my client earlier in our discussion. Um, so someone might hire me for copy coaching and then sit down and be like, hands up, this, this is really way too hard. Like, yeah. All right, I, I'm, I'm throwing the white flag up, like, I'm done, please take over because I tried and I just can't do it. It's not coming out how I want. And I think that's fine. Like, there have been many things in my business that I'm like, you know, especially as I grow, that I'm like, nope, I have to do this. I have to do it my way, you know, like bookkeeping, for example. Like, I'm not, I can barely add half of the time, you know? So I'm like, why would I be doing my own books? But, you know, at, like I mentioned, at different stages of your business, you're going to have different beliefs and and things will transition that you're going to have to have help at that point. So I say that because even if they're adamant that they want to DIY, they might decide it's not the right decision for them after they talk to someone. The opposite, I know I'm, I'm, I'm taking a long time with this one, but the opposite is if you, if you're like a hundred percent, you've talked to the copywriters, you've done your homework, you've read your marketing blogs and you're like, I'm jumping in, I am doing this and that's it. Um, I want to remind people that when they think about every page, always put on that tour guide hat because mm -hmm. you have to sit down and you have to think, how am I directing my audience to take an action? Like what action are they going to take? Like what's important and how can I get them to take that action? So keep the tour guide hat on and remember the website is not about you at all. It is about showing how you can give that client a transformation, whether you're offering a product or a service. So, you know, web um, about pages, for example, people will always be like, okay, I'm ready to jump in and like, you know, share my love of ice cream, which is, I do actually think I talk about that on my about page, but um, it's not really about your love of ice cream and how you, you know, like did X, Y, Z as a child, or it's about how you can, clearly identify their needs and then drive home why you're the right expert because they have a slew of experts anyone I mean there's tons of copywriters out there tons 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 um and that's why I mentioned some people are right for a specific client whereas others might be better so the same goes for any profession you know like show why you're the right person to give that transformation so tour guide client transformation Awesome. Yeah. Just thinking of like that overall strategy, like before you dive in, like what's the point of this page? Because a lot of people are like, what should I put on my homepage? Or what should I put on my about page? Like typically those who are DIYing are asking me, right. you know, for help on copy because they're feeling a little lost, but right. they still want to do it themselves. And so, you know, a lot of that is, you know, it's usually go hire Aaron or go, you know, hire a copywriter. Um, but, you know, it's thinking 
you know, what's the point of this page? The about page, you know, yes, you want to share about yourself a little bit, but that's the reason is not to talk about you. The reason is to get them to take action to then move them further along on that journey. So last question about your, the website itself. So um, a lot of people, especially maybe those getting started or who not even, I guess those, Rephrase. Let me completely rephrase this question. So regardless if they're getting started or if they've been at it for a while, um, sometimes people are, you know, they're thinking about a blog and their content marketing. And they're like, oh, I should have a blog, but no one really kind of knows the strategy behind that or like the why. It's just because like you're supposed to. So can you talk to us about like the advantages and we can dive deeper on this in like maybe another interview, but just kind of like some of the advantages and strategies behind having a blog on your yeah. website. Yeah. So I started my entire marketing like writing career specifically focusing on blogs which was really fun because um it was oh gosh how many years ago like six or seven years ago now um but it was really in the days when content marketing was becoming content marketing mm -hmm. so um blogging was a huge driving factor in building relationships with clients because um ha using blogs showed that you could be consistent it showed that you were like educating them um you knew, had a lot of knowledge you were like showing i mean besides the consistency of re regularity it was you were showing up right this was way back before facebook lives existed you know ig stories or anything like that it was your way to build that relationship and then blogging had kind of transformed where I think people thought blogging was dead or uh, because they had these easier, quicker ways to connect with their audience, like the ones I just mentioned. Um, but I think if there's anything this pandemic has taught us, it's that blogging is integral to uh, building a brand. And here's why. So your blog, uh, every blog post that you have is an invitation for someone on the internet who has no clue who you are to come and find you. Um, we could talk about SEO, but I would never stop. Um, so I won't, I'm going to try really hard not to talk too much about SEO now, but what happens with, if you're using SEO in your blog post is you're like being very clear to Google or any technically any search provider and your audience that like you are able and willing to talk on that particular topic. Um, an easy one that I, I mentioned to all clients and people think I'm so silly is how to peel potatoes. So you come up with like a long tail keyword phrase, how to peel potatoes. And there's going to be someone on the internet who needs to know how to peel a potato, right? It's a simple question, you know, like new cooks might have it. And if you have like a, you know, like new mom's cooking guide or like fresh out of college cooking guide, you're those are the people who want to know how to peel potatoes like people who've been cooking in their kitchen forever are not searching that term but if if your audience is you're attracting the right person right away so without going into my peel and potatoes the blog post topics basically just think of a blog post as an each individual blog post that you have is an invitation that draws people to your site to learn more about you so if you are showing up consistently, consistently, let's say you're posting one post a week, that's 52 blog posts that you'll have at the end of the year. So there are 52 different invitations mm -hmm. that could find your ideal client, right? So you want to make sure you're not blogging about things that just don't matter. Like you, you want your, anything that you put on your blog to be very like specifically related to your business. Um, like, so for me, I just mentioned, I love ice cream and I could write blog post after blog post about ice cream types, my favorite kinds, you know, dairy ice cream versus non-dairy, but that the people who would find that would come to my um, website about copywriting and content strategy and then they leave right away after they got what they wanted from the blog post instead if I talked about like uh, the, the key things that you need to know before actually spending the money to hire a copywriter the people who come there will find my website and they'll be like oh well she's a hot copywriter let me learn a little bit more about her so I think blogging is very important um, I mentioned the pandemic and the reason I did that though is is to show how blogging became alive again suddenly people had tons of questions um, using myself as an example I started to break 
uh, make bread with my toddler because you know we're just looking for something fun to do but then once we started we we just kept kind of going and we made all these different types of breads that I never would have done before if I didn't just google one day but now I had to learn things about like yeast and sourdough and I spent a lot of time reading content that had been written five six seven years before that is always going to be helpful right so every industry has that type of content it's actually called evergreen content if you're going to be like doing research and, and thinking about adding a blog to your site you want to make sure that when you have this blog it is not a news source so you wouldn't be posting like something like a press release about like something you're offering or like links to like new specific things to your business you're going to want to post those topics that are helpful that are engaging that meet your client on the journey that they're taking and just remember that they're really an invitation to come back to your website and spend more time so that's where that strategy comes in again you know if you're thinking someone finds you on the internet and they had no clue who you were before and they find this great blog post that they offered them some help about maybe a type of way you'd work with your clients you don't want them to read the blog post and then be like that was fun but now it's done you know like you know thank you daniel tiger for that one but um you want to direct them either to more blog posts so they're spending more time on your resources or you want to direct them to go into your like website like did you find this helpful learn about the ways we can work together here and maybe it's your services page um and one more thing about the blog, because I do find some people, there are people who are like, yes, I need this. I might not know why I need this, but I definitely need a blog. And then there are other people who are like, very hesitant to have a blog to their website. And I will be the first person to tell my clients that not there's not one marketing rule that applies to everyone in the world. So as much as I, I personally love blogging and I think that it's so helpful for a website, I don't always think all clients need blogs. But I will talk to every client about whether or not it would be helpful to them. Um, some clients might not approach blogging in the same way. You know, I, some of my clients, what we'll do is we'll create cornerstone content that will be like um, just cycled all year round. So maybe they have one post a month, but that post is like a, a wealth of information. Um, other clients might kind of avoid the actual blogging route and use it as like a podcast page where they will have their show notes, for example, and link, to, link out to the podcast or link out to a YouTube channel. So there's many ways to have that blog on your website. And if the term blog makes you uncomfortable, you could use a resources page, um, things in that, like topics, right. if you want to have something. But I think that like, if you consider all the opportunities to introduce new people to your brand, it's a poor decision not to have one. Awesome, I love everything that you touched on. And I know like there's so much more that can go into like just strategizing about, I mean, and you've even helped me with my own blog content and like my own like strategy itself for my own blog. Like it's just so many different ideas and you know, different ways to deliver it and to reach and that's a huge, for me personally in my business, like a lot of people are coming to me, like my SEO, I feel like it's ranking the way it is because of the blog posts that I have in place and how they're kind of tied into my business offerings and so forth. So definitely, I feel like it is important, like you had said, um, but definitely, you know, there are other, other strategies and other tools that can be, you know, in place for that. So Aaron, is there anything that we touched on or that we didn't touch on that you would wanted to add or add to the discussion before we wrapped up? Um, I honestly think that my best recommendation for anyone, and we've, I touched on this a little bit, and even you mentioned this, but I think that like my, my best recommendation is to keep your options open and not pigeonhole yourself um, into one thing. We usually, and I, I'm one thing I mean DIY. Um, like I said, we're all at different stages. There are so many businesses have transitions and uh, copywriting can be difficult during those transitions as people figure out what they need to say. So it's not a new to business stage. It's not like, you know, like you haven't made it if you are like doing really well in your business because things will just con like continue to change. Mm -hmm. um, so I say be very open to the fact that you need to reconsider your marketing goals at very different timelines, right? Um, and then one thing that I know that we've had uh, discussions about this and I know that you've said to clients and I've said to clients is remember that your website is not a stagnant thing. Like it will change and it's good to have it change. It's not like 
I got it wrong the first time. Like, oh my God, I invested so much money in this and now I have to start over. I mean, honestly, if you feel like that, you've probably worked with the wrong copywriter um, because you should just be either adding upon your message, um, adjusting your message. Uh, you should never feel like you really have to start over, but your business will change. So your website has to adapt to that. Um, and if you use my digital storefront analogy here again, I never realized, I guess I really do love analogies, but <laughs> if you use my digital storefront analogy here, think about how storefronts change. Um, you know, so you have seasonal storefront um, things where they'll change with like summertime, wintertime, um, back to school season, you'll have new things in the windows for that. And uh, while your website might not change as frequently as an actual storefront would change, it will change based on your offerings and your, your different transitions in your career. Um, and that's good. I, I mean, I would consider that like a great, like you, you're making it in business because you are able to adapt and you're able to shift your message. And um, I, yeah, I think that it's just, it's really great advice to keep your mind open to working with people, to the messages that they might, the, how they might want to massage your message. Mm -hmm. And then remembering that all messages need to be adjusted over time. Yeah, absolutely. I love that you ended on that. Um, I was just on a call with a client who, um, mutual client that work, has worked with both of us and she's been in business for a really long time. She has a success, successful business and we're talking about one of her pages. She's like, I guess I'm just still figuring this out. And I was like, no, like, I'm like, like yes. And no, like, you've got it. Like, right. but this is exactly where you're supposed to be. Like, you're just evolving. And it's not, you know, necessarily like a full pivot or like a full rebrand or a full, like, you know, tear down the copy and start over. It is like, as your business grows and you realize what clients you want to work with or you don't right. want to work with and you're evolving and who you want to attract and who you want to maybe not attract, you know, right. all of that is just as important. Yeah. So I love that you touched on that and ended on that. So Erin, if someone wants to connect with you or to chat with you or anything of that sort, where can they find you on the internet? Ooh, great question. So you can find me on my website, which is erinolilla.com. And, you know, that's a mouthful and fun to spell. So I'm sure, you know, find my, my, um, Katie will have my name written down here. Yes. Erinolilla.com. Um, on Instagram, I'm at Erin Olilla and you can find me on Facebook with the same thing. I'd love to connect with people. Awesome. Thank you so much. And it was a pleasure sitting down with you. You too. It's so nice to see you, Katie.